I thought we might start uh, just with a, an introduction for people who won't be familiar necessarily with the Wall Street Journal op-eds. But so the, the Wall Street Journal op-eds that you wrote with Sam Nunn, Henry Kissinger, and Bill Perry seem to have effectively almost overnight changed the way that people talk about nuclear weapons. Um, and I wondered if you could summarize for the Sojourner's readership what it is that changed in the world that allowed these former nuclear hawks, or at least people who are known for a strong position on defense, uh, to be in favor of the abolition of nuclear weapons. When I took part with President Reagan in a two-day meeting with President Gorbachev in Reykjavik, in 1986, we talked about, of course, large reductions in nuclear arsenals, but also about the possibility of ending nuclear weapons entirely. When I got home to Washington, Margaret Thatcher arrived and almost summoned me to the Amer British ambassador's residence. And I learned that there's a verb in the British language. Remember, she carried little stiff handbags to be handbagged, beaten up in their handbag. So I was handbagged. And she said, George, how could you sit there and allow the president to agree to eliminate nuclear weapons? I said, but Margaret, he's the president. She said, yes, but you're supposed to be the one with his feet on the ground. I said, but Margaret, I agreed with him. So I really got beaten up. And that was the general reaction. People felt that nuclear weapons, by being so horrible on each side, had kept the peace. I think all four of the people who are prominent, who signed an op-ed later, 20 years later or so, all, all four of us had been intimately involved in the Cold War. We all knew that there were a lot of close calls. It's easy to have a mistake made. And if there were a nuclear exchange between the Soviet Union and the United States, it would basically wipe both countries out of, off the map. They are so devastating. And if you think about what a, new, a modern thermonuclear weapon set off over New York City, say, would do, it would incinerate Manhattan Island. And so you can't help but say to yourself, how can such destruction be put into the hands of a man who gives an order to do that? Mm. Who, who is entitled to do that? Nobody. Mm. At any rate, I noticed that Henry Kissinger in a panel we were having said at one point, the thing that worried me the most that I lost sleep over that gnawed at me when I was in office is what would I say if the president ever asked me my advice on whether to use a nuclear weapon. So at any rate, we convened a conference here 20 years after the Reykjavik meeting to explore the implications of what was talked about there. And there emerged from that meeting with the headline, four signers, but a lot of other people also mm -hmm. signed, um, calling for a world free of nuclear weapons and outlining steps of how to get there. And the reaction was entirely different. Mm. Not that there weren't people who were opposed, but there were a huge positive reaction, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And it started people thinking again in a constructive way. I think the reason for the difference, reasons for the difference are, number one, as more countries have nuclear weapons, as people worry more about the fissile material that may be lying around, that can lead to a nuclear weapon, the less confidence anybody can have that deterrence will, 
can be relied on as a way of keeping them from being used. Hmm. And the use of a nuclear weapon would change all aspects of how the world works. Hmm. So that was a reason. I think also we talked about steps that you needed to take. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't sort of pie in the sky, let's just get rid of nuclear weapons. We said, no, that's not the way it's going to work. This has to be done with great, great care. Because mm -hmm. you're talking about the security of countries. Everybody's wanted to do it carefully. And here are the steps that you need to be ready to take. And these are each doable mm -hmm. things. And each step makes the world a little safer as we go. Mm -hmm. So we're getting better as we're working at it. Sam Dunn likes to use the image of being on the side of a mountain. And he says, at the top of the mountain is a world free of nuclear weapons. We can't even see it from where we are, but we know it's there. At the bottom of the mountain, there's a world where more and more countries have nuclear weapons, where there's more and more material lying around from which a terrorist could make one, or a rogue country could make one. Suicide bombers aren't really deterrable. 